Well, when the bell goes, um, I'm not giving you 30 seconds more. That will be the completion of your time. Thank you, Chair. My name is Trish also I'm a resident of 20 Kingston Street. You saw the view from the back of our house from the photograph in South Patel's report. While we support the concept of the development for housing overall, building B09 still remains a significant concern and our concerns have not been addressed. As you can clearly see, it still has three stories, the ground floor, first floor and the second floor. I don't understand the description of the two and a half stories. You can see <coughs> how clearly it um, resembled the three other three-storey buildings in the South uh, report. The SPD guidelines of a tight two-storey boundary on the western boundary is clearly being breached here. Um, in the original report, which was all we had access to, um, it had been reduced by a mere 20 centimetres. 20 centimetres. Um, I noticed South now makes mention of 1.7 metres, but you can still see, we clearly see in the um, uh, representations that it's a three-storey building. The current gatehouse on our boundary is six metres. You can see the impact of the wall on the rear of our property and the shortness of our garden, which is common with many gardens in Kingston Street. Um, that house has been in place since the 1980s at, at that extent. Uh, the ridge proposed is now 9.2 metres, which is 50% uh, more than the existing height, which is already oppressive. Um, despite being moved uh, a mere two metres off the boundary, in contrast to the new houses, which are three metres away, the scale and mass of BM9 are inappropriate and affect our amenity, and are still only <coughs> excuse me, seven metres from our rear room. Um, South's report mentioning 30 metres is completely inaccurate, that's the entire length of our house. Um, the statement that's desired from the, for the entrance uh, to the site can be achieved in other ways. There is no need for height to achieve that. It could be better done with art on uh, the blank wall of uh, a muse house, so the muse could be extended by another house. This would actually give better quality housing than the Toki flats in the current design. The ground floor of B09 in this revised um, form is too small for community use, as PACT will um, confirm, and uh, is really one use and all um, We require B09 to be removed from this proposal altogether and propose replacing it with a muse house, two storeys, set back three metres from the boundary, continuing Kingston use. If not agreed by the council to remove B09, we would like some very strict conditions for the use. The ground floor use only 9 to 5 Monday to Friday, rather than the extremely long uh, hours currently proposed. No music at all with a noise constraint. And also, as the houses 18, 20, 22 and 24 have no rear access whatsoever. Is that three minutes? Um, well, I'm, I'm going to have to stress this. I think that three minutes elapsed. <coughs> Sweet. Stephen is in the bottom. Um, so, just to continue that, as we have no rear access at all, we would like to get rear access through the, um, the, the rear alley that's proposed at the O9. Um, I still have serious concerns about the site access junction. Um, the, the trip generation and the, the skewing in terms of car is underrepresented, in my opinion. Um, and the junction analysis that's been done in the transport assessment is inaccurate. It's, it uses a model that takes no account of the high levels of pedestrian and cycle use along Mill Road and from the site itself. <coughs> is that it? Yeah. I think that's it. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Right. Uh, now, we, John Franks, Beesfield Area Community Trust. John, you have one minute. Thank you. Chair, Council's officers. Um, we have lots of concerns around BO5 use of Angela Street traffic and open space, counted to include the Chisholm Trail. The joy of being Chair of PACT is coming here twice a year to complain about D1 community facilities protections, and this sheet of amendments is a doozy. CWRC are unhappy to be moving off the depot site with the loss of 450 square metres of community facilities. The officer adds up potential replacement facilities. Optimistically, that contravenes the local plan with a one third decrease in space at least. 
and not a single square metre of that is actually going to be planning, a planning protection after this application if you approve it on this basis. There's an option of 50 square metres in the BM9 building, but no D1 or community use is actually proposed. There's 85 square metres of new offices that have been rented by CWRC, but they're offices, they're never going to have D1 protection. And finally, the YMCA has a proposed 250 square metres of community facility space. And much of that's been relocated off Gonville Place, so it doesn't count, it's been double counted. Um, there are, of course, Gate House Community Centre proposals, but they're not submitted or mentioned here. This is not adequate protection. To approve this without some way to protect the community facility protection would be a blatant contravention of the local plan. Please don't do it to Petersfield again. Thank you so much. Katie Preston. Um, hello, thank you. We're local to Mill Road and have been involved in all stages of these proposals. We've also done our best to send our detailed comments to all relevant councillors. Thank you to those councillors who have read our comments and we do urgently request, if you haven't already, could you read them? Um, as, yeah. This application today is premature because splitting the site into two applications has made it impossible to consider the needs of the site as a whole. The community is being let down because of the reduction in community facilities available. There is also the totality, which is huge, of site-wide issues such as traffic, parking, safety and open space. Um, we've already asked repeatedly for key information on traffic and mill road access and we haven't really had that now. Um, that in itself makes the application premature. But now a whole area of green space originally promised to the community is being lost to the second proposed application for the YMCA development. We'd also like to strongly endorse what the comments made by John Franks particularly relating to the Cambridge Women's Resources Centre. Thank you so much. John Preston. We have alerted you to serious flaws in this application in relation to Draft Local Plan Policy 23 and then PPF Power 131. The Section 66 statutory duty requires the Council to have special regard for the listed building in making its decision, but the building at risk report is not even mentioned. The Mill Road Access Improvement for Vehicles Only do not satisfy draft policy 23 because they do nothing for the safety of the most vulnerable road users, pedestrians and cyclists. There are serious issues in terms of site capacity as well as access. No provision is made for community centre visitors, cars and cycles. What about disabled parking and servicing? Is there sufficient space for these, together with the proposed level of parking for the housing? The applicants claim that this proposal increases the amount of open space to 28% is not credible. Take out the Chisholm Trail, which is a transport route, not public open space, and the figure is under 18%. Such issues cannot be resolved without a comprehensive approach to the whole site. We therefore call on the Council to withdraw or refuse this premature application. We've written to Daniel Zeitner MP to seek his help in extending the government funding timescale.